Traveling to ride bikes is a treat, but traveling with a bike can sometimes be a pain. In this video, I want to talk about two things. One, uh, my review of this Thule round trip case that I've used for a couple years now, traveled around the world with it, what I like, what I do not like, and two, just some general tips and tricks that I've learned many the, the hard way over the year of what you should and should not do when traveling with a bike when you're flying. Let's start with the case. The Thule round trip is a semi hard shell in that there's these plastic inserts that can be removed and the thing can compress for temporary storage. Like when you get to your hotel, you can slide the thing under your bed. That's a plus. It's certainly not as safe as a full on hard shell. One benefit to this, in addition to being able to tuck it away when you're not using it, is that it's a little bit smaller and easier to fit in the backs of cars. That's part of why I've gone with this. One feature that I love about this thing is that there's a bike stand built in, which makes it a lot easier to work on when you can stand up like a human instead of being, being hunched over like a monkey working on the thing. It is not a feedback sport stand. It's not a high-end stand, but it definitely elevates the thing and makes it easier. I am here. Uh, I'm not sure where I am, honestly. I'm upstate New York. I flew into Syracuse late last night. Uh, drove about an hour north towards Waterton, Watertown, showing my ignorance here, uh, for the North Winds Gravel Classic, a first-year gravel race out here in the beautiful countryside. One thing I recommend doing with your bike case is using it to pack other things and use padding. So things like your helmet, which is always an awkward thing to put in your suitcase, right? Because it's going to take up so much space, but it's not very heavy. Putting it in the bike case along with your bike shoes and some tools is a good use of space. Just, you know, wrap it up so it doesn't get greasy, dirty, or uh, ho hopefully will not get dinged up. So I'll put my helmet and sunglasses, little camera tools in there. How this thing works, you know, full zip, wheel bags, like you'd use in most any case. And then on the side, the, le the legs of the tripod act as a bit of uh, reinforcement. You know, Fort Knox it's not, but this adds a bit of reinforcement to the bike. And I sometimes will take off the cages and then put water bottles in there as a way to, one, remember <laughs> to bring bottles, uh, but also give the cages a little bit of support. And also to open up this space to make rooms for the hubs from the wheels, whether it's like the cassette sticking out a bit um, or just the hubs themselves. It seems like you got a little bit more room there when you open that triangle. So that's something I do. It just takes a few seconds, but you got to remember to bring everything. That's the part of the fun of taking stuff off your bike is you can get to your destination and realize, oh, I neglected to put on, put my derailleur in the bag. Speaking of derailleur, I brought it. That's a good, that's a good thing. I take my rotors off because having bent rotors is not how you want to start your cycling vacation or your cycling race weekend. Uh, just takes a minute to remove and reinstall, but can make a big difference again. A lesson I have learned the hard way. Speaking of lessons learned the hard way, bring the rotor tool so you can put the things back on. Like for many cases, you got to take off the seat posts and take off the handlebar. And this is one of those instances where those integrated bar stem combos sure look nice, but they can sure be a pain when traveling. So having just the, the old school, traditional handlebar is one piece and stem as another uh, makes it easier to configure. I'll just take the stem faceplate off and then pad and secure the handlebar, uh, sometimes to the fork, sometimes to the down tube. So it's not rattling around, so it's not sticking out and so it's not you know, going to ding the frame. You know, again, non-integrated is easier. You know, having uh, loose cables outside the frame just gives you a little more wiggle room to configure. 
I always put my shoes in the bag. And then in my shoes, I'll put other bits like took off the chain, chains in there, chain tool, key piece, the stem faceplate, pedals, lube, the aforementioned rotor tool, eight mil for the pedals, and then a little uh, T25 for the zip. Stim bolts. Flying in the US and also internationally, you've got a 50 pound limit often, but I find with gravel bikes, I can still put in all the things you've seen me pull out here, the tools, the shoes, the helmet, uh, some additional bits and bobs and still be well under that 50 pound limit. Here's the third leg of the tripod. Oh no. Oh, I had some scratch in the bag. There's still some in the bag, but there's <laughs> yeah, a couple servings worth now in the bottom of the case. Wah, wah. Other tools popped in there. Just bought this Silka Tactico pump. See how that goes. Uh, I like it in that it's got the extendable, I like the concept, I've never used this thing. Extendable hose, so you're not you know, wrenching on the valve stem. I have used and generally loved the design pumps of a similar design for many years. Those guys thread on, and if you have one of these, you've experienced this. You thread it on, you pump it up, and you go to remove it, unthread, and in doing so, you can unthread the valve stem and let it all the air. So this guy has a little little latch, like the old school Zeffel frame pump. So I like that. It's pricey, it was like 50 bucks or something, but test in progress. Uh, and then a feedback multi-tool that I love because, well one, it's nice and tidy, but ratcheting uh, head is great for doing things like putting on the cages, like in tight spaces, it's just easier to work with a little ratchet than a full-size tool. And it's got a built-in five mil uh, torque wrench, which is good for, you know, making sure your bolts are tight. The frame is mounted to the stand, which clips into the case itself. This is not where I put it in. Sometimes our friends at TSA will reconfigure the packing jobs for you. This bit is the base of the tripod. Remove that, put the tripod legs in it, and then this frame clamps to this, and there's your stand. This little lever is how you disengage the piece at the rear, and then the front slides out. Pop on the legs. Uno, dos, tres. Tighten them down. I pull the little latch in here to disengage and this puppy pops out. Now we can get this guy out of the way. So now let's take off all the padding, stick that back in the case, put the parts back on. Little cross country Velcro strap, secure that. Then I had a little rubber band on top as well. Houston, we have a situation. So, my chain tool, I put the two little pieces, and now there's just one. <laughs> so, the question is did this little chain link piece fall out here, or did our friends at the TSA, when going through my stuff, accidentally lose that piece. I'm gonna scramble around on the ground and we'll find out. TSA, you're off the hook. I apologize for slandering your pristine reputation. It was I who dropped the wee little piece. 
This is a little toe peak uh, chain tool. And it's handy ah! when you're not dropping the guts. And that can store, although not perfectly securely, the chain links and then remove and reinstall a link. There we go. Okay, onwards. <laughs> putting on pedals you don't have to put them on that hard people one <laughs> one favorite memory was uh, doing a Italian Grand Fondo back in the day my buddy Jason Sumner had borrowed a bike can't remember from whom somebody put the pedals on for him and it was somehow connected to Eddie Merckx the pedals we could not get the things off for the life of us at the end of the trip and Eddie Merckx himself was there with the pedal wrench, pedal wrench standing on the thing, kicking it, prodding it. His old school teammates from back in the day, the, the gents he raced the tour and other things with, were there all you know, grumbling at the bike, kicking it. Finally got the thing off. That was, again, a favorite memory. Eddie Merckx cussing and kicking at a bike, trying to get pedals off. You don't have to put these things on that tight. One step I should mention, cleaning the bike before you pack it makes your life better. Don't have to, just nicer. Putting your seat post back on, a few things you can do. You can use electrical tape, you can use a silver Sharpie and or you can just measure it. Remember where you measure it to. I measure right to the, between the center of the uh, post clamp, uh, the top of the saddle. Torque wrench built into this multi is handy. Clicks, good. I also recommend deconstructing your bike at home with the same tools you're gonna to use when traveling. Otherwise you might be in for some rude surprises like mm, the fact that your multi-tool might not work with this particular stem bolt configuration. So use the exact tools to deconstruct the bike that you're gonna bring with you to rebuild the bike. Another thing you can do to speed up the process and make sure it's same, same, is take that silver Sharpie and mark a little dot on your stem and a dot on the handlebar to line up so you get the angle just right. This is not my bike. This is a test bike. Uh, Lauf, Lauf Siegla with the rigid fork, not the Lauf True Grit. So I'm not going to mark on this bike, but that's, uh, a couple little dots is something I would recommend you do on your own bikes to speed up the process. Otherwise, you can just eyeball it, right? Do it by feel, which is what I will do today. Again, make sure your bolts are tight to spec. Later today, I'm gonna go do a shakedown ride, peep the course, and you know, make sure everything is locked and loaded that, you know, the stem mount stem computer mount is tight doing a shakedown ride is not always possible i realize time wise but highly recommended when possible to make sure your bike's set and also it's a good time to take a peek at the start and finish and get the legs opened up brake blocks if you watched my <laughs> bighorn gravel video uh, you saw my forehead slapper there it's a very simple thing very simple thing. It takes a couple seconds to pop in there and prevents your brake pads from getting mushed together. This is an exclusive high-end packing device called a 
reclaimed cardboard box. When possible, use your plastic dealios. Not so much to protect the hub, which is which it does, but also to protect the frame from the hub banging on it. Just make sure when you take these things off that you get all the hub pieces <laughs> that come along with. My camera's, my camera's telling me it's overheating. So we're gonna take a little break. I'm overheating too, little camera. It's hot out here. Oh, the key pieces I bring to a bike race, water bottles and coffee. This video is supported by Perk Coffee, which brews all sorts of delicious blends from mild to wild down in Georgia. You can save 15% on coffee with the code RIDE15 at perkcoffee.com. I like the Juggernaut, which is a darker roast. I like the tall bottles. You can also get short bottles there for all your hydration needs. Put the rotors on, put the chain on, put the wheels on, and then we're got something that looks kind of like a bicycle. Rotor tool. This rotor tool is nice and that you've got both the you know external and internal all in one depending on what your configuration is. Since I'm testing bikes all the time, it's nice to have both in one. Unlike the pedals, you should wrench down pretty hard on your rotors. You don't want those guys moving on you. While I take the rotors off, I leave the cassette on. Some of that could be I've had rotors damaged. I've never, knock on wood, <laughs> had a cassette damage. Although the cassette can punch holes in your frame. With this bike bag, I took a specialized Athos to Belgium for the Spring Classics. Very carefully removed the rotors, packed the frame very carefully. When building it up in a little Airbnb there outside Kortrijk, was very careful to make sure everything was good. Went out for a ride and heard what sounded like a tin pan underneath my wheels periodically, like crank, crank. Fast forward a little while, you know, 20K, 30K into the ride, realized that was not a tin pan I was hearing, that was the sound of a cracked carbon down tube that had had a hole punched into it. Was that the cassette? I don't know, but something definitely came through the side of the case and, or force came through the side of the case and, and popped a hole in that frame. So you know, definitely make sure your cassette is not near your down tube or the hub is not near the down tube. And if it is, pad the snout out of it. Just like having a clean bike is nicer to pack, having a clean chain is nicer to put back on the bike. Uh, I like using Pro Gold, I've used that for years. And then wax is something I've been using more in recent years. Uh, not quite as clean necessarily, at least for me, for the persnickety types who do a chain protocol treatment <laughs> after every ride, maybe it's clean, but still, chain wax or Pro Gold make for a much nicer, less messy, chain uh, uninstall and reinstall. Make sure when you put your chain on that it's facing the right way. Some chains are directional and some, like the SRAM flat top, uh, have a specific orientation. And then also make sure you route it properly through your derailleur cage. That can stump people sometimes. SRAM says, I should note for the record that these Quick links are meant to be a one-time use only. I do this often when I travel, so, but just for the record, SRAM says one-time use only. I think that's just a CYA thing for them in case you don't reinstall correctly. You've got a bit of adjustment for aft on this. You don't have height adjustments. It doesn't move again. Alas, it's not a feedback sports sprint stand, but it is nice to have the thing elevated and semi-stable when you're working on it. I should note that this Thule round trip is an older version. The newer version has a little bit more reinforcements in the sides and uh, better padded bags, but it's roughly the same design. And Thule also makes a hard shell of this, the 
round trip transition, I believe it's called. That again is a safer but heavier, larger thing that doesn't compact down. Okay, put some wheels on, put some stretchy pants on, go ride bikes. Sometimes it's so easy and sometimes it's fussy. Why is that? Why is that? See now the rotors, good as when I remove them. Need to readjust that angle. So there you have it. Some tips, some tricks, some lessons learned the hard way. I'd give the Thule case probably a four or five stars. I wish the plastic inserts on the sides were stiffer and I wish there was a way to make a fourth side of the box, so to speak. You know, the, the bottom is solid, the sides are semi-solid, but the top is just fabric. So there is zero structural integrity there. I wish there was a way to, you know, to put in some inserts to give that a little bit of protection. So aside from that one specialized Athos incident, sorry specialized, I've had good luck with this bag, you know, probably a couple dozen trips with no damage to the bikes. Again, I'd recommend that you very care, whatever bag you're using, very carefully, not just pad the frame, but make sure that wherever your hubs and your cassette are sitting uh, are not in direct contact with the frame because if and when things get squished, uh, that could be a bad situation. Hopefully this video is helpful. One last thing I should add that's helpful to me is having a checklist when I pack, you know, listing every single tool, not just tools, but like specifying because I'm an idiot and I will forget things like rotor tool, multi-tool, chain tool, etc. And going through and manually checking those things off. I find that to be helpful. Hopefully this video was helpful to you and when you get where you're going, your bike will be safe and sound and you'll have all your tools and bits and bobs and you will be able to get out there and enjoy your ride.